How many times have you wept because of your own situation for yourself? Many times. Many times, a few times, once, none. <clears throat> for gratitude, for God's grace, God's love, many times. Okay. For misery of my uh, situation, I I don't really remember. I know you cried when uh, your marriage request was not. Uh, your parents did not uh, agree. No, my parents agree with date when we marry. Uh, you cry? No. No. The the permission I got it was the date. Ah, I said I want to okay, marry date, all okay. year. All right. So anyway. Um, how many times have you wept because of Jesus? A lot. A lot. So you can mark many times. A lot. I cry actually today morning. Okay. Cause grace. Question two. Me? If everybody do. If you were served with the last medical death, what would you do? That's like a, after this meal, <laughs> you're going to die, you know? And then, uh, what would you do? You, you cannot eat and then will cry uncontrollably because I'm going to die after this meal. May eat a little bit, but tears will run endlessly. It's a less degree than the first one. Eat and do what I should do, what needs to be done. Enjoy my last meal and finish it off. <laughs> <laughs> so, <coughs> I go for third and fourth. No, don't, don't do that. Just choose one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, go, one. I'll go third. Okay. Choose <laughs> one. Okay, we go number three. Let's go number three. What do you think that Judas was thinking while eating the Passover meal? He tried to find the chance to endure by Jesus. Yeah. Jesus arrived the uh, evening time. Maybe he trying to avoid, you know. So uh, when it is dark, he just arrived. They were eating Passover meal. Judas may be thinking, looking for an opportunity when he's going to hand over Jesus. So he's, uh, when, okay, this meal will finish, what time? And then he already knew where Jesus was going to go. Jesus, in his guess, he just would go to Mountain of Olives because uh, he often go there to pray at night. And that was his guessing. But he's counting uh, so that he may uh, betray Jesus. Question four. What did Jesus say about the betrayer? One of you will betray me, and it would better not be born uh, to this world. Yeah. Uh, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. So they are eating. Uh, Jesus mentioned, one of you will betray me. You know, when Judas heard about this, what do you think he would think? <coughs> trembling, yeah. trembling, cannot, then avoiding eye contact, <laughs> just trembling. How, how does he know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh he knows. Oh. It, it is a conversation back and forth between Jesus and Judah. Judah said, uh, um, Jesus said, 
one of you will betray me. And Judah surprised. How he knows? He knows. How he think he cannot know? <laughs> he saw lots of miracles together. Uh -huh. How can he think he cannot know? Uh -huh. So, you know, this invisible, <laughs> invisible <laughs> message go back and forth between Jesus and Judah. Uh, question five. What was the response of the disciples? They were saddened and one by one they said to him, Surely not I. One by one. They were sad because uh, uh, betrayal is um, the very bitter life experience, betrayal. And uh, it is a very sad scene. And one by one they said, it's not I, is it? Lord, is it? They asked, you know, said one by one. Probably Judah also did the same thing. Surely it's not I, you know. One by one, 12 of them responded. Question six. What was the, the answer of Jesus? Why didn't the didn't he identify the name of Judas? Mm, it is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. Mm, that's the Jesus answer. And then, anyone, the Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But all to that man who betrays the Son of Man, it would be better for him if he had not been born. So he, Jesus thought about the, um, the God's uh, accomplish, fulfillment mm. first, not just uh, lying and pointing out Judas. It is, Jesus didn't say it's a Judah. It says it is one of the twelve who dips bread into the bowl with me. And they had a, like a sauce bowl, you know, sauce bowl. And then when they eat the bread or bitter herb, they dip with in the sauce in the bowl. So one who dips bread into the bowl with me. <coughs> uh, The Son of Man will go just as is written about him. Uh, it was God's will, plan, God's will, that Jesus uh, die on the cross for the sins of the world. But he talked about sin of betrayal. How horrible, how terrible sin it is to betray Jesus. So Jesus says, it would be better for him if he had not been born. We, we do not know what terrible punishment Judah will receive. It's not worthy. 30 silver, 30 silver is not worth it. He loses his own life and the eternal punishment is waiting for him. And Jesus said, it would have been better than if he had not been born. At first, and I read this one, mm -hmm. it was so harsh. Oh. It was so harsh. To say that if we had not been born, it would be better. When I we, when we curse somebody, huh? the 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 worst curse is like that. It's better not being born. 
but you know, it's actually it is mm. to do that. It's better. It's mm. better. Uh, it's warning. Jesus says, "You are about to betray me," and Jesus warning. It is you are about to commit the most terrible sin. And they still, Jesus wanted him to repent. Even that moment, Jesus wanted him to repent. That's why he did not tell Judah's name. He even now, you know, in Genesis, uh, Cain about to commit the sin. God said, sin is at the door, but you must master it. That kind of counseling. This is a warning, and this is a last chance. When I prepare this one, you know, never late when we repent. is never late, never late. Any time. We should turn around if we know it is wrong. We have to turn around. Any time, any situation, we have to repent. And never it is too late. This was the chance Judah could repent, could turn away. Judah, 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 yes, he repent. One of one of the third, twelve, Jacob's the son, Judas. 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 Yeah. So. Judas. Okay. Judas. That's Judas. right. Uh, never too late. He should have repented. <clears throat> but evil power was too strong. Can come back. Question seven. When and how many times do you pray for your meal? Yeah, when you usually eat. Uh, when do you pray? How many times do you pray when you eat? Either lunch or dinner? Three times a day? No, no, when you eat. Suppose you eat dinner. When do you pray? Before. Before, Before you eat. How many times do you pray? Once. Once. So I do not know at this time when Jesus had the Passover meal. I just think that they also uh, pray before they eat and then once pray. But um, what did Jesus think in verse 14, verse 22? Verse 22. Can you read? While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. So, while they were eating, so obviously, before they begin to eat, began to eat, they prayed, right? Prayed. And then this one, Jesus took bread, gave it thanks, broke it. So, he prayed again during meal. Why? You know, uh, well, after church we have a dinner, lunch. Shepherd Isaac can sit there. Not more than once. He prayed twice. <laughs> <laughs> It's habitual. <laughs> so, but I don't think Jesus pray. Why do you think in the middle of eating Jesus pray? Is it on the purpose? This is. In the middle of the eating, yeah. oh, this is a special event for the Jesus want them to remember. Mm. So they they are studying the you know the Passover, the meal for his uh, he represents his body. 
Right. Uh, and then, so it's a special ceremony. Exactly, exactly. Communion, so exactly. Special... You know, uh, he pray. He took breath and he gave thanks. So when they have, um, they have a Passover meal, it says they drink four times. And then they don't have an individual cup like we do. They have one big cup. And then they drink pass. They drink pass like that. And then they go four times. 12, 13 men drink from one jar. And then they said they eat bread, unleavened bread, three times. So I can arrange it, the bread, bread, here. It is my guess I never attended the Passover meal, but, you know, at second round, third round, fourth round, and then drink, and then they break the bread. And then drink four round, break the bread with herb, third round. So, which comes, gospel loop comes drink first, bread, and drink again. But gospel Matthew, gospel Mark comes bread first, <coughs> and then uh, cook, you know, follow. Jesus gave the bread. So, maybe this one. This one, maybe um, broke the bread and then gave the cup, or this one. Anyway, Jesus gave in Pascal Mark bread first. Suppose this one, Jesus took this bread, gave thanks. Is this bread the same as this one? Yes. This one is. Different, different. It's consecrated. Consecrated. You know, special, special. This bread, Jesus said, this is my body. I mean, physically, in physically, <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> consecrated. So, this is my body. So, what did he think? Uh, what did he think? He think God gave this bread, his body, for the sins of men. This bread, special bread, his own flesh, his own body. Jesus knew he's going to die, and then his body will be offered in the, on the cross as a sin, sacrifice for sin. And why me, why me? I, 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 I miss so many people uh, crying out like that. She just didn't cry out, why me, why me, why my body? He thank God, he thank God that God gave his own body for life of many. So let's read. This is corresponding uh, in meaning. John chapter 6, verse 33 and verse 51. Gospel John chapter 6. Verse 33 and 51. Let's read it together. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And then verse 51. 
I am the living bread that came down, came down from, from heaven. heaven. If, if anyone eats of this bread, this bread he will live, live forever. forever. This, this bread is my flesh, which I will, will give for the life of the world. Living bread. Jesus is special bread, bread of life. Living bread. So he thank God. God gave the world, the body of Jesus, as a living bread, as a spiritual bread. Question eight. What does it mean by take it, this is my body? Jesus broke, Jesus broke the bread and then he gave it to the disciples. Take it. This is my body. What does it mean? Okay, when and how does this bread effective? Take it, this is my body means eat it, right? Are you hungry? Yeah. When and how does this bread effective? When you eat. Correct. When you eat it, you have to eat it. So, um, You talk about it. It's not effective. You look at it. It's not effective. You think about it. <laughs> think about it. It's not effective. You know about it. It doesn't work. You discuss about it. It doesn't work. When does it work? When you eat it. Jesus said, take it. When you eat it. It is effective. When you eat it, your body will be nourished and then you become healthy. Healthy. You, you have to do it. You have to eat it. So, talking about Jesus, sacrifice, looking at the cross, think about it, know about it, discuss about it, nothing, nothing works. You have to eat it. So, <clears throat> when you eat it, eat the flesh of Jesus, the body of Jesus, nourished, nourished, and become healthy. Jesus, spiritual bread, bread, 
flesh, Jesus' flesh. Eat it and then nourish them. Receive life. Life. Because it's true bread. Jesus' body is the true bread. So what does it mean, eating Jesus' body? Symbolic. Yeah, so, symbolic. What symbol? Uh, listen and follow Jesus' word. <clears throat> believe it. Believe it in our heart. Believe in our heart. that his body was torn to pieces and died on the cross. His body was open. It was his body. His body was sacrificed on the cross for me. Believing this one is eating me. Our heart should be fed, fed by this. Believing this one. Jesus' body sacrificed on the cross. So that, that my soul, my heart is nourished life we grow in life you know um i could find any example because it's a, in the old period there was no doctor or surgery many women died uh, during delivery if there is any complication woman mother die just die and like when i read the roman history a lot of generals, emperor's wife died because, you know, uh, during delivery. And then when the mother died, she wished her child will live. That's how she died. Even though she died, she said that, you know, her child may grow well, live well. And then they usually, the child is like a, a prince, you know, princess. They tear the mother's body to get the child out safely. You know. But mother sacrificed her body and she died for her child. The same thing Jesus did. He, he sacrificed his body on the cross so that we may live. We may live. So, it's a symbolic. Eating that uh, bread was, she just said, take it, this is my body. It's a symbolic. I am giving you my body for you, for your life, for your life. Okay, question nine. <clears throat> Again, what did Jesus take in? 14.23 Then he took the cup, gave them, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. Jesus thank God for giving, living, to me. <laughs> so, he thank. This cup, God gave the life of blood of his son for the sins of the world. The blood of the Son of God is was different from the animal's blood. Animal's blood, they have to keep on coming, keep on coming, keep on coming, couldn't get rid of sin. 
but the, the blood, the power of the blood of the sun, the blood of the sun has power to forgive. So Jesus thanked God. God gave the blood of his son for the world. That means, you know, he will shed his life blood. But he thanked God. So many people, you know, say, why me? Why me? And cry out, God, why did you choose me? Why did you choose me to sacrifice? Why me? How about, how about this person? How about that person? But Jesus, thank God. God is love. He gave the blood of his son for the sins of the world. He thanked God. Question 10. What covenant is there in the blood of Jesus in 1424? 1424 say, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said to them. Yeah. What covenant? This is the blood of the covenant. <clears throat> blood of the covenant. What covenant? So covenant is, is cutting human flesh. Covenant is like a agreement. Agreement. Yeah. So it was uh, to. Ke yeah, I know. It's agreement. Oh. It's by it's shedding blood uh -huh. that you can be forgiven. Right. Yeah. This is a agreement between. <coughs> God and humans between God and sinners and then between God and me this agreement God and I you and I it's an agreement between God Whoever believes that the blood of Jesus forgives my sin. In the court, God's court, in the God's judgment seat, when the God judges, God says, you are not guilty. That's the covenant. Whoever believes Jesus died on the cross for my sins. He received the punishment for my sins. And his blood, blood, without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So by shedding Jesus' blood, my sins, all my sins are forgiven. That's the covenant. That's the covenant. So this is the blood of the covenant. Jesus said, Drink it. Question 11. And then how does this covenant affect you? When we believe Jesus' blood. His blood. Uh, um, Okay. Again, think about it, discuss about it, talk about it. All this don't work. No. Please stop doing that. 
Jesus said, drink it, all of you. It works when we drink it. Drink the blood of Jesus. Then it works. When we drink it, it nourishes. And then become healthy. Vitamin C. Okay. So when we drink blood of Jesus, and then our sins are forgiven. Sins are removed. And then life. Instead of death, it's life. So how we drink the blood of Jesus? It is a spiritual drink. How we drink blood of Jesus? By believing them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, first they have to accept, we have to accept the sins. Accept our own sins. The most obstacle in here is refuse to accept own sin. Rationalize because of that, because of that, because of that. Then it's not drinking. Yeah? Cannot drink. We have to accept. Like a prodigal son. Father, I have sinned before heaven and you. He, he accepted. But Adam in the Garden of Eden, the woman, you gave me, she gave me, so I ate. He tried to escape his responsibility. God did not accept it. God said, you did it. You, you disobeyed. You. So, well, we have to accept own sins and then believe. That is, that is happening in our own heart. That is drink the blood of Jesus. Well, we accept our own sins and confess and believe that blood of Jesus has a power to remove. That is drinking. Drinking. And then we come out of guilt, condemnation. We come out of life, joy. Great joy because Holy Spirit works in this. Okay. Question 12. Compare the Passover meal with the Lord's Supper. This is a um, okay. Cup one, cup two, cup three, cup four. You know, and then bread here, bread here. Ah, uh, what's the Passover meal? Roasted, the, <coughs> roasted the the lamb. The lamb. Oh. Unleaven the bread. Unleaven the bread. Bitter herb. Bitter herb. Wine. And then wine. And uh, I found out there is a, a sauce to dip, you know, the bitter. bread and the bitter herb. Sauce. This is if we have a dip in the dish. Holy oil. Sauce, you know. Uh, but somewhere around here, somewhere around here, Jesus consecrated the cup and the bread. 
and had the Lord Supper. The Lord Supper. What's that? This is a Passover meal. What's the Lord Supper uh, food? Jesus body and Jesus blood. Yeah. Jesus is body and Jesus is blood. Amazing. This is over. This is over. That night, Jesus started the Lord's Supper with the bread, with the drink. So Christians no longer celebrate Passover. Christians started celebrating Lord's Supper. Until now, thousand years, Lord Supper has been celebrated. It's supposed to be last meal, you know, uh, in the Texas uh, um, Huntsville, there is a prison, and then uh, before execution, before execution, uh, they offer last meal. They ask the prisoner, what food do you want? And then the chef prepare the food. And he eat it, and then they go to the for execution. It's supposed to be last meal for Jesus. But amazing, Jesus started the Lord's Supper. And then history changed. New history began that night. The first Lord's Supper with his disciples. History making, you know. So, <clears throat> the Lord's Supper They call what else? Communion. Yeah, communion. I got so confused because there are so many words. <laughs> uh -huh. So I have to study, <laughs> look for all this. Communion means fellowship. How can this be a fellowship? For the sinners and Jesus, God and me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus invited us to the Lord's Supper. He invited us and then he wants us to have a fellowship with him. How? Accepting his body, eating and drink his blood. The more we eat his body, the more we drink his blood, we go into deeper, deeper fellowship with Jesus. I had a question number one and two, right? How many times have you wept because of a situation of Jesus? The more we have a fellowship with Jesus, the more we know we go closer to his suffering. His suffering is not just in the head. We feel in our heart how much <coughs> Jesus suffered for me, what he did for me. We, we have a communion with Jesus, fellowship with Jesus. But if we don't have a fellowship with Jesus, 
We never cry because of Jesus. We never have one drop of a tear, even though we always in our mouth, Jesus died for my sin. In our heart, we never know his suffering. We, we, we never share his suffering. So, uh, another one is the Eucharist. This is also the Lord's Supper. This one is means Thanksgiving. And then ordinance. This all the Lord's Supper means ordinance. This one is a uh, Baptist use this one. I heard of it. Yeah, if you don't you use the other term, they become angry. Uh -huh. So the, when you talk to Baptist, you have to say ordinance. Uh, ordinance, why? Because Jesus commanded to this in remembrance of me. To this, commanded. This is the uh, command or law command or law or they must to, to command it. Also sacrament. It's like a, a holy, holy right. It's all the same for Lord the Supper. In the sacrament, there are uh, all others, but uh, it's all the Lord the Supper. And then in Gospel Luke, chapter 20, verse 19, Jesus said, Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus wants us to remember him as we do the uh, communion. Remember him because we forget. We forget and we only cry for myself. You know, forget Jesus' death on the cross. So when we do communion, we we go, go closer, closer to Jesus. May we not intentionally, but we commit sin through life course. Then we have to drink the blood of Jesus, and then we have to give our sin to Jesus. Jesus offered His body through His body. He saved us. So through this, we have a fellowship with Jesus. We become to know, go closer, closer to Jesus. Then our heart weep. Some some woman said uh, she think about Jesus on the cross, how painful he was. She said that she cries. Yes, I thought, wow, you are a better Christian than I am because I never cried like that. <coughs> The last question. When you take the bread, drink during the sacrament, uh, is it really the flesh of Jesus and the blood of Jesus or piece of cracker and grape juice. We uh, taste cracker and grape juice. Uh, we have an a intelligent uh, brain so we can think, imagine. Um, 
Okay, one by one. This is the Judy. Uh, have you ever attended the book communion? Yes, many times. Okay, then uh, was it cracker and grape juice or Jesus body and the blood of Jesus? Which one? <laughs> okay, what are you thinking? Next person. This is Rebecca. Have you ever attended the communion? Yes. Was, was it cracker and grape juice or uh, body of Jesus or um, blood of Jesus? I took it as the body of Jesus and mm -hmm. body of, uh, blood of Jesus. Okay. The journey? Cracker. Grape juice. Grape juice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Jesus said, Okay, this is a piece of, piece of bread. Jesus said, This is my body. Take it. This is my body. So is this a cracker or Jesus' body? Jesus' body. And then the cup, drink it. This is the blood of a covenant which is poured out for many. Is it grape juice or blood? Did you taste the blood? Did you taste the blood? Yes, no, when you have a scar. <laughs> <Are you kidding? laughs> yeah. No, when you have a communion. Oh, no. <laughs> Never. So then, uh, so there are uh, there are many uh, theories and teachings. And they said uh, this is really, really the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. Really, real. This has been, uh, this has been uh, Catholic, Catholic Church. But until the uh, Reformation, it's been taught like that. So priest. Ordained the priest to have a power to change it. So have you ever attended a Catholic Mass? Mass? Uh -huh. Worship service? Uh -huh. Yeah, I when mean, I was young. Yeah. yeah. And then the this is the main main thing is this one. And the priest, you know, bring the Do you do every week? No, several times a week. Several times. Yeah, it's not once a week. Mm -hmm. And then whenever they meet, this is the communion is the major. But then uh, you see the priest bring the cup and it's uh, this is the body of, this is my body. You know, this is my body. When the ordained priest repeat that same, you know, several times, it changes to real blood of Jesus. Real. And then the Krika, and they said, it's really party of Jesus. They use a very uh, typical term. You know, it's like uh, water changes to wine. Jesus in the Canaan uh, wedding. Uh, through priest, Repetition, it really changes real. So they call this trend, substance, situation. I don't like to use a typical word. That means really, it started with the cracker and with the grape juice. But by the time the priest 
repeat it several times, and it really changed to Jesus' body and blood. Okay. But uh, uh, after the reformation, um, they said, no, no, it is not. <laughs> it is not changed. <laughs> so they said that uh, it is just a symbol. It's just a symbol. Kreka symbol, you know, symbolize the body of Jesus. Grape juice just symbolize the blood of Jesus. It's just a symbol. It's not, it's not blood. You know, when the Jesus changed the water into wine, the wine, it was really wine. It didn't go back to water. I really want to have a, uh, you know, chemical analysis will come <laughs> and then after they change it, uh, really uh, analyze it's blood or Grape juice. They can prove it. Because after Jesus changed the water into wine, it didn't go back to water. It was true wine, they said. So, you know, they said it's a symbol. And it looks like a, uh, uh, then it's not really a holy and it's really just a cracker and juice. You know, it's too. So they, you know, said that, ah, oh, it is, it is just kreka, we are doing with the kreka and the grape juice. But why are we doing this one? Jesus is present, spiritual. That's kind of, a, you know, moderate. Present. Jesus is present spiritually. Calvin said this one. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, we eat and before, before. But this is not important. I really don't want to discuss about it. And then um, there is some deception, you know. This is deception. And then I don't want to talk about it. But true communion, true communion is we go deeper. We keep our sin. And truly accept, look at Jesus who gave his body for me on the cross, who shed his blood for me on the cross. So doing this one, communion, we go closer, closer to Jesus. So eventually, we don't cry many times for myself, but we cry many times because of Jesus. Jesus who loved me, who gave his life for me on the cross. Okay, today's Bible study is up to here and we will share.